and welcome to another edition of Education is the Best Medicine. And thanks for watching. And remember, public access is your best bet. This is the second in a continuous series on the discussion around Alzheimer's. Um, and I want to dedicate this show to my guest, Mr. and Mrs. Green, who shared their insights and shared their family with me in terms of the disease uh, uh, Alzheimer's. Um, I wanted to first start by, uh, uh, again, also thanking Reverend Sauls' congregation uh, for his uh, leadership and uh, <coughs> uh, discussion in the last three to four years in regards to Alzheimer's. And in fact, that's where I met Mrs. Green. And uh, uh, we then started these discussions and then met with her husband at their home, which is a beautiful home. And, uh, 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 and uh, um, here we are. Huh. Mrs. Green, Mr. Green, thank you, thank you for coming. Uh, um, I want you to talk a little bit about the disease Alzheimer's. Uh, when we were talking at your home, you talked about the family structure, uh, Mr. Green. Could you tell us a little bit about your family in terms of uh, the disease Alzheimer's and your close uh, association with it? Well, let's see. We've been living with Alzheimer's for about 20 years. That's my, my mother had Alzheimer's, okay. and we were her caregivers. Okay. And um, everyone in her family had Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. My father's family, everyone had a 21-year-old brain when they died in the hundreds. Okay. I have an aunt that's 105 and a half. Mm. Mine is sharp, sharp. Mm -hmm. um, and so the genes on both sides are, I mean, just opposed. I mean, just directly opposite. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I said, well, who wants the Alzheimer? I raised my hand and said, I'll take it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, but... It's, uh, it starts out, and it's getting earlier and earlier in people, and especially people of color. Uh -huh. uh, it's been a disease that uh, people are ashamed of. You can, all, you can have something physical, but not something mental. Mr. Green, you, 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 when we first met, and I uh, uh, first want to thank you for uh, uh, being uh, an uh, open and intelligent and articulate black woman, and, and very uh, um, clear in what she wanted to have happen because you gave me a note, you gave me a phone number, and all those things made this possible. So I want to thank you. Okay. Tell me what it has been for you as the wife and, and a caregiver uh, uh, living uh, with Alzheimer's. We had talked about it, and I wanted to, you to share that with me, us today. Well, one of the things is you learn which battles you're going to fight, mm -hmm. and you take it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to have had the experience of working with my mother-in-law, okay. which helped me when I saw things happening with my husband. And when behavior seemed to have been changing, I learned when to back off, and I learned when to step forward. Mm -hmm. and. There was a period in which he was not able to really say what he wanted to say, but you he he like he did not want you to feed into his conversation okay that was his space at that time, so I learned to let him have his space mm -hmm. and when he needed it, kind of asked me i'll give a clue when you when you feed into this conversation, what do you mean? Because I know we were talking sometimes, <clears throat> it's like he would miss a word and you would... Well, now, what? we're at that point now okay. that we can look at each other and uh, he'll give me a clue that he wants me to give him the word. Okay. All right. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, does that happen often throughout the day, often throughout the conversation, or it just depends on what's going on? Right now, I'm at the stage where I, it's very hard to uh, retrieve or bring up uh, words. Mm -hmm. Uh, words that I've known, like was. I can almost spell it, but I can't, you know, bring out the word. Um, especially if I get upset and uh, anxious. Um, I'm on Aricep, and okay. I'm, say, one in seven that uh, Aricep helps. Okay. I'm, um, I've changed my lifestyle so that, you know, I write down things. Appointments, if I don't write it down, we never had the conversation. So I've changed my life, put things that 
help me. Uh, I don't take on anything negative because uh, mm -hmm. negativity sends out negative endorphins. Okay. Positive sends positive endorphins. Okay. Uh, my wife understands me now. Uh, and when we first started, you know, she's an exacting person being a high school teacher uh -huh. and administrator. That's interesting. Both of you are teachers, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. You taught where? Well, I t in San Francisco. Okay. Uh -huh. and I, but I was in the elementary uh, teaching staff and uh, administration, and she was in the high school okay. division. Is that how you guys met in that kind of No, thing? we met uh, <laughs> in the social group during the... 60s uh -huh. and partying all the time. Okay. <laughs> We're very proactive. Right? <laughs> yeah. now, uh, you talked a little bit about anger, and, and we understand that some of the presentations in men of color, particularly, is that of aggression. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it, it is tended to be misdiagnosed by the medical community, looking at African American men as either schizophrenic right. or bipolar. Uh, I'd like to ask both of you how did you come to grips with? that uh, level of hostility, and I understand another became physical, but I still, it's a level of hostility mm -hmm. that frightens people, and, and again, as men of color, we are always menacing anyway, I think, so. I think, yeah, I think men, uh, uh, men of color, uh, because of some of the experiences we have, we're very aggressive, mm -hmm. and, um, and Alzheimer's has a mean streak to it, mm -hmm. uh, and a, a depressive type of state, and okay. so with the medicine for Alzheimer's, you have to have a, I call it a downer. Okay. Something that's going to let you uh, not get so upset okay. and not be depressed a lot. Okay. So I think that anyone that's going through this with their parents or something, they may be um, diagnosed a medicine for the Alzheimer's, but also get something for that mean streak and they don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. Because, I mean, you, you take that mean streak out on the ones you love. Okay. All right. Okay. And so, I mean, something that will make you mellow. Okay. Right. I got you. Uh, Mrs. Green, um, I understand that you had to deal with this mean streak. Uh, and uh, how did you do with it? How did you identify it? How did you cope with it as, again, as a caregiver and as a, as a wife? Fortunately, uh, we have the same doctor. Okay. Primary care. And I, I just explained things to her, what was going on. Um, she experienced it because of, in 99 he had, um, he was paralyzed. I woke up paralyzed. Okay. And so they had to uh, put him on some very heavy medication. Okay. And she explained it to me like this, if you or I had the medication that he has had, We'd be dead. Okay. So she knew what to give him and what to give him, what level to give him. Okay. And she was one that helped me through a lot of it. Okay. okay. Um, and I just learned to back off when I, you could almost see it coming. Mm -hmm. A sharp comment may have been inappropriate, but okay. it, came, it was coming, so you back off. Okay. Tell me. And I cussed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the, the beginnings of Alzheimer's in terms of memory loss or, 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 or a mean streak. Or what did you first notice that made you kind of concerned that something was happening with him or that you yourself felt something was happening with you? Okay. I was, a, I was an elementary school administrator, a principal. Okay. And on that first day of school, you've got to learn 50 new names between um, 7 and 8 o'clock when the bell rings okay. so that you call them by name. I couldn't do it. Okay. I couldn't, my memory did, I mean, people that I knew, I couldn't pull up their names. Mm -hmm. okay. That was one of the things that started to uh, make me you know, feel something's wrong. Because okay. right. it had been, always been natural for you. Oh, you natural, I mean, hey. Yeah. And, and it's just the, the memory loss. I uh, had a high IQ and I was proud right, of it. Okay. But you could return, change certain things and what you knew you knew. Oh, yeah. But I, in terms of what you knew to be your memory at that time, you knew it was, it was it's, failing. It was failing. Uh, did, the, did the providers at that time, were they willing to talk to you about it? Were you able to go to them? Or was it still kind of like, I don't believe this is happening? Well, that's it. You know, like, oh, no, that's uh, 
an elderly disease and you're not there yet. And I had to really be my vet's advocate mm -hmm. and demand that they give me a, and this was new at the time, a, um, an MRI and a brain scan. Okay. Because before, the only way you could tell Alzheimer's was after death and you do a mortician. So, um, so when they found, uh, when I demanded and then they gave me this, they found that part of my brain had dissolved. Mm -hmm. And it was in the word identification, word pull-up section of the brain. Okay, which and the cognitive your, functions uh -huh. in your memory. And, um, and so then they... Uh, I went on, you know, I'm uh, an educator, I went on the, uh, the web and started looking, well, what's happening, what's this? And I came up with an um, Aricep, and I mm -hmm. took it to the, my doctor. Mm -hmm. And, and um, now I have to say that the system today is you have to be diagnosed by a neurologist. Mm -hmm. the, care, the, the primary care person can't do it. Mm -hmm. And so... My doctor you know, referred me to a neurologist. The neurologist you know, went through all this stuff. And, uh, and we, uh, you know, uh, he diagnosed and uh, prescribed Aerosol. And that gets to my point about the medical team. Mm -hmm. uh, we had talked about that at the home in terms of what you think constituted a good medical team and even some of the testing that you had asked for at first and then didn't receive and then the MRI mm -hmm or the, uh, the brain scan, you received it. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you thought, uh, at, you're looking at it now, what would have been a good team to er diagnose this early? I think the team configuration should be the primary care person listening very carefully, then moving to the neurologist. Um, gerontologist may be involved. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the things that he, he, his case was really complicated because of the prior history. Right. So they're kind of wondering if this is related to the Demerol that he had been on. Exactly. So long. For, for the neck injury, mm -hmm. for the paralysis. Mm -hmm. And, and um, as a result, I think, I think it followed the right path, but it had to, to be detangled. Okay. All right then. So primary care. Uh, gerontologist, neurologist, specialty testing, probably mm -hmm. in the MRI, CAT scan mm -hmm. area, and just again the perception that this could be happening. Right, you know, there and, is a, and there is a diagnosis. One, there is one other uh, area that they're looking at now, which they did not look at before, and that was the PET scan. Okay, that's new. That's it's new, Ish. but it's also expensive. Right, and insurances won't always cover it. Okay, hey, go, I'm sorry. Go on. I I have to state, you know, you know, our system of medicine has changed over the years, and sometimes the primary care are you know, the younger doctors, and they really don't don't know about Alzheimer's. Okay. Your primary care is a diagnosis mm -hmm. that you have to make uh, it, uh, with And you have to, you have to, you have to be, your, yeah, you have mm -hmm. to be your best advocate. Something's wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you don't pressure, you, you know, you okay. will say, well, he says, okay. And then, and you have to get help early. It's just like mm -hmm. any Early disease. diagnosis, early mm -hmm. treatment. Early diagnosis, you have a much greater chance of being able to, you know, live a, 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 a more productive life longer. What, have you, what side effects have you noticed from the aerosol, if any? I don't seem to have side effects from the aerosol. Okay. Now, it, it, my body works with it. Okay. And, and each, I'm very attuned <clears throat> to my body. Mm -hmm. And I've been you know, uh, diagnosed with medicines that when I take it, I say, hey, this, my body's not working with this medicine. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you have to be attuned to what's going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, and like I said earlier, you know, people are afraid. Well, Aunt Susie had something, and she was kind of strange, and they're afraid, well, maybe I got it. Well, I say to those people, check out. You can check it out now. It's much better to find out you don't mm -hmm. have it or find out that you do have it and start on the uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I haven't lost my social skills. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, it's, but I have, uh, I'm kind of a neighbor because they wonder why I haven't, 
The Senate way and more. We said that uh, when, when this program is mm -hmm. taped and you see it, you'll be seeing it for the first mm -hmm. time all every time. It's kind of interesting. I thought it was mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Um, I think also that with the aging of America, uh, but again, this is not a disease of aging. It's more of ge genetics now and environment and, and maybe even a question around trauma. Yes. Uh, uh, and again, I want to thank both of you for coming on and sharing the story. I think it's enlight enlightening and illuminating. Um, what you guys are doing a lot of advocacy things now. You, you're working with the state, and you've been traveling back and forth. So would you tell me a little bit about mm -hmm. that and what that's been encompassing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in 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 the in '05, we've gone to Sacramento to speak with the assemblymen. Okay. Um, assemblymen, just all these assemblymen. That wanted you no, know, you were designated. There were teams okay. of three people, and you would um, have a designated assemblyman to talk with. It's your assemblyman. <clears throat> and follow, following that, we went to Washington, D.C. in April and May mm -hmm. to the public forum. There we were to speak with um, senators or congressmen just to remind them about the need for more research and to um, make them more aware of the, what's happening with Alzheimer's in the uh, population. And and the people of color. People of color, but also looking at what it's going to mean in five to ten years with the baby boomers and how it's going to affect Medicare. It's going to wipe it out. Mm -hmm. It now there are. We found out that there are. And what, what you mean by that is, so we can understand that by wiping out means it'd be more expensive for long-term care, more it's, expensive for medicines. People are going to be living longer and utilize the system either in an emergency situation or a chronic situation. This is all going to impact on the what healthcare dollar we have. Exactly, and it's not just the African American. It's the Third world people are really being affected. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that the general public does not know, there are a lot of medications out there waiting to be passed. Um, but we got to get more money mm -hmm. in there for research. So the research is there. The medicines are coming down the pike. It's just not enough money for Right. Them. Okay, we were know. we were in Washington the same time that Nancy Reagan was there okay, for mm -hmm. uh, you know for the Alzheimer's uh, talking to people for the need for mm -hmm. um, research money. Mm -hmm. I have one medicine that I have to take that is working, that is forty nine dollars a pill, and just think, I mean and, you know, and <coughs> I'm blessed. I'm blessed that I have insurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But think of the poor people who do not have insurance. Yeah, underdiagnosed, undertreated, undiagnosed, mm -hmm. undervalued, less health care dollar, an aging population. Yes. It, it, it's a, I wanted to bring you on to show that this could mm -hmm. be, it's going to be a devastating picture for it the is. community. And I think we need to be starting uh, to beat whatever drums we can, mm -hmm. and part of that is having you folks come on and talk about yeah. this because we think it's so important. Uh, 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 I really, as a provider, had seen clinically Alzheimer's and dementia, but as I look at the numbers now, I'm mm -hmm. really kind of frightened, you know, and, and it hits home when, you know, the community speaks for it, so it really is really I, important. I think that's one of the things. I want to put a face on Alzheimer's, you okay. know, and, uh, you know, it's all right. It's they, over there, somebody had it. Okay. But I went and put a face that I have it. Okay. All right. now, again, yeah, I mm -hmm. want to thank you for your leadership and for your courage. Um, how have things changed since all this, you know, when well, you're coming on the program, I want to thank you. How have things mm -hmm. changed for you now? I mean, you, do you think the message is getting out? Do you think people are hearing what you're saying? Uh, are we a little bit behind? I think we're behind. I think we're below stand. I think we need to come up. But from your perception as folks living with it. I think... Um, you know, people are still weary and weary. I still, there's a still a lot of um, denial. And I mean, in my family, in my friends, oh no, you don't have it. 
because I'm not bl a blatant idiot. <laughs> Right. Yeah. But I do have it. Yeah. And uh, many people, well, my God, if he has it, then I might have it. The fear is there. Okay. And um, I think at one time cancer had that fear. Okay. And now people, it's all right for people to have cancer because there is medicine that helps. Okay. Well, there is socially medicine. acceptable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. doing there is medicine that helps Alzheimer's. Yeah. Yeah. I want to yeah. also say, again, Alzheimer's is a disease that attacks the brain mm -hmm. uh, and it causes nerve cells in the brain, mm -hmm. in the brain to die. One of the issues around treatment is either to slow that death of those cells down and prevent the chemical and, and nerve changes that happen when this disease dysregulates, causing the, the, the fiber tangles and plaques in the brain. Um, and again, there's a mighty evidence that there's a role of inflammation, mm -hmm. and even this is why you have to see a provider because this could be a B12 deficiency, or right. it could be okay. uh, liver or renal disease, uh, 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 or uh, and we want to make sure that we don't misdiagnose this for probably a neurologist. A team needs to be involved in the diagnosis of the disease. Um, Can I say one thing? Sure, it's please. not only a, 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 natu a nature thing. I mean, you don't inherit. It's now you see, I mean, food, I mean, nature, uh, and, nurture. nature and, and, and nurture. I mean, the food, you might get a hit on the head that may lead to Alzheimer's uh, uh, trauma. trauma. Yeah. You might uh, have eaten the wrong food with some of the additives. Yes, And exactly. that could cause problems. Uh -huh. So we're seeing Alzheimer's disease as probably having a number of causes to it. Yes, uh, and, uh, all and And probably anywhere from uh, uh, community issues in terms of toxic exposures to trauma to issues of racism mm -hmm. and sexism and classism that create this environment that sometimes it's worse. All the above. To death. <laughs> you know? I'd just like to add one thing you ask how are we, the changes we're seeing for ourselves. One, I think that the message is getting out there, and I can say, um, as evidenced by our experience at our church. People, there's a support group there now uh, who can now come and say, you're talking about it and I'm experiencing some of those things. And we can tell them, make sure you get diagnosis. Make sure you come out of denial instead of worrying about could you have it or your children having it. Be tested. Could you give me just a short caveat of that story you told me about the young women that you met yeah. in church and, oh. uh, and, you, and one of the seminars? Yeah, that was. one of the young women was coming home from work and she saw her mother walking down the street. She asked her mother, where are you going? She says, I'm going to the hospital to get my medicine. So she says, I'll take you. She gets in the car. Her mother has no medicine, no prescription. Um, and she didn't know why, what kind of medicine she was going to get. So from that, after she talked with us, she followed through with the primary care doctor who referred her to the neurologist. Her mother is on medication, but her mother relates better to the grandson than to the daughter. And I was explaining to the daughter, it's okay. You accept whatever world she wants to be in that day and don't fight her. Okay. One day at a time, huh? One day at a time. Mm -hmm. That's my motto. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. I know he didn't bring me this far to leave me now. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, I think that, again, uh, Alzheimer's as a disease can be devastating, but with the work of family, friends, community, and exactly. a listening, intuitive health care system, we have a real good chance at slowing down this disease and being there. There's no cure for Alzheimer's. Uh, uh, we are still in the throngs of research. This is why I must put in a, a plug for stem cell research. I think it may oh, be yes. one of our avenues that we need to look at in terms of treatment of this disease. Uh, and I think that uh, I would like to close it out and say any final words before we get out of here. You know, at one time we looked at uh, polio with, uh, oh, it's a death sentence. Or we looked at other things. Now we have vaccinations. That's what they're trying to do with Alzheimer is vaccinate the body to use the body strength to keep from, you know, uh, going into the final stage. Mrs. Green? Uh, I, w I wanted to talk about the vaccine also because in families, because the parents have it, 
does not mean the child has it. And I think we have to continue to educate our younger family members to test, not to worry. Okay. Well, I want to thank both of you for coming on. And I always sit in my shows and say, I want to thank you for bringing light to a very dark world. And if vision for both of you, of you is the art of seeing things yet unseen, then both of you are visionaries. I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I think that you know we're we're doing. Uh,